Hello everybody, welcome back to Sin City Living. Jason here with today's video. Again guys, please email me some ideas, some videos, questions, or some strategy videos. Don't email me a video, I shoot the videos, damn it. Um, email me some strategies, some questions, anything. Just give me some ideas of what it is you guys would like to see. Uh, otherwise I kind of have to keep pulling these things out of my fourth point of context. So, today I want to show you a strategy that I saw played out today. Um, it's not a very good strategy, which I, but I thought I'd show it to you guys because one, the dealers loved it, and dude's a super nice guy, and he has actually changed his strategy slightly. So, here it goes. So, this player would not play the pass line unless he was shooting. And then, regardless of what the point may be, it doesn't matter. Uh, for, okay, so the point is four. This player would have, oh, I'm sorry, I should start this out on the come out roll. So, on the come out roll, this player would have a $6 horn deck, all the hard ways hopping for a dollar each, and a $3 three-way red. That's his come out roll. Now, first off, that horn bet, most casinos are not going to let you do that. But most casinos are not going to let you do a $6 horn bet. So I think that, that right there was probably why he kept telling us that this other casino, I'm not going to name any names, or this other casino just absolutely sucked. Um, my guess, because it's a really nice casino he was talking about, my guess is it's because they would not allow him to do his extraordinarily improper horn bet. I personally find that silly because we take $5 horn bets, we take improper horn bets anyway. So what's the big deal? I just, I don't understand it. But... Anyway, he has an improper horn bet, then he's got his three-way seven, and he's got his hard ways hopping. He does not have a line bet, again. So let's look at this. So, on the high side, at two or 12 rolls, that horn bet wins $40. Okay, $40.50, but we're gonna keep that 50 cents. Actually adds up in this guy's case. So it wins $40, minus the seven, he's gonna make $33. Something on the low side hits, he is going to make $11. He's gonna win $11. If a if a seven rolls, he's gonna make $3. So he doesn't really make much money off of this, not, not at all, but that is his come out roll. Now, once the point is established, and we set a four, once the point is established, this right here, this $10 in action, all the hard ways hopping plus this horn bet, $6 horn bet, this is a forever bet. For him, this is, this is a, a constant, constant, constant bet. It's every single roll. I personally would love to recommend that he go play roulette because his odds are going to be the same, but his payouts going to be a lot higher. However, he really takes care of the dealers, so we don't. Now, if the point is an even number, then he actually adds $5 to his hopper, in this case the four, and he makes it, in the fourth case, to be a two-way four. If it was a six or eight, it would be a three-way six or three-way eight. He would go to, on the six or eight, he'd go to, th to $2 on the hard and $2 on the six four and $2 on the five one. Uh, if it were six. On the four, he goes to three and three. Three dollars on the hard, three dollars on the easy. Same thing with the 10. So now he's got 15 action all the time, every single roll. Now, through a couple of rolls, that's gonna be all he bets. Then after a couple of rolls, he was on a $10 table. After a couple of rolls, he's gonna switch, not switch, he's gonna add, I'm gonna say 64 cross. In reality, he would add 54 cross, and then he would place the point on the line. So, same damn thing. 64 across. And he would typically throw the dealers a couple of bucks, say, hey, put it, you know, put it wherever, uh, but bet it. He, he would want us to bet it. Everything would be player control. Now, generally, anytime he would make, get, get ones, he would throw them to the dealers and let them do their bets. Let them do their bets. I started out at one point with a $1.9, and we ended up with 64 across for the dealers, plus uh, then I believe it was the six or the eight was at $36. Because um, once I get it proper, because I just press, press, press. Once I get it proper, then I press one unit and we lock up the rest. Now, he never, ever, ever pressed. Never pressed. But what he did do, he's extraordinarily superstitious. He would turn his bets off. I would say half of all the rolls, his bets were off. We turn them off, turn them back on, turn them off, turn them back on. But he would still have his 15 action here, or 10 action if it was point was an odd number, but 15 action if the point's even. So he would be throwing in $15 every single roll, unless one of them, unless one of them ha actually happened to hit, um, which, you know, the likelihood was not super high, but they did hit from time to time. Our dealers got very, very, very good at paying this, this particular center action. But let's look at this, $15 in action, right? 
Well, five, six, eight, or nine, either one of those, any of those four hits, he gets paid $14. So he actually had to throw us in a dollar to keep this action up. So every time one of these roll, which by the way is 18 of the 30 non-losing combinations of the dice, 18 of the 30 ways the dice can go that does not lose, he would lose a buck. Now, if a four or 10 would roll, he would be getting paid $18 in most places, 19 with us. So he would make either three or $4. He'd make either three or four bucks. That was it. And typically that three or $4, he would chuck in to the dealers, you know, or he would hold on to it for next time he had to throw in a dollar with, with these inside ones. So he was, you know, he was definitely baffled by how he was losing, but really, he just, he, he really couldn't win. I mean, at 15 action, if a hard way were to roll, two, uh, or uh, if any, if, if a hard, hard way that wasn't four, any of these three rolled, then he would win $16, 16 bucks, right? Plus, whatever's up here, if he's got this bet. But again, he didn't bet this at first, and a lot of times he had it off. Right, so he went $16 off of, off of his hoppers. Um, on the horn bet, he got 40 minus nine, so $31 on the high side, which didn't happen very often, and 18 minus nine, nine bucks on the low side, which happened a little bit more often. So generally, his entire hopes and dreams rested with hitting a winner hard when the numbers are even. When the numbers are odd, a little bit different. But when the numbers are even, he would be resting, he, he, all his hopes and dreams rested on hitting a winner, winner hard way. When the number was even, he really didn't have a, a winning condition. Unless we rolled like 15 12s in a roll, he wasn't going to win. He really, really wasn't going to win. Now he played for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. All right, I'm not gonna talk, I'm not gonna say how much this player lost, but it was a significant amount of money, probably half of one of my paychecks, right? And here's the thing. Here's what made this so very, 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 very telling. Was, again, we would have our, our bets inside, but I would say at no time ever did he throw in more than $10 on any given roll. Very, very, or if he did, very, very rarely, never more than 20, but very rarely did he throw in more than 10. Most of the time it was probably five or less. All right? So we would start, you know, we would have something like, oftentimes if he threw $3, we would do something like this. All right? And our goal was, let's say this hits, right? Because we can't do anything else until that hits. So this hits, we're gonna fix it. Then we're gonna wait for it to hit again. Next time it hits, we're gonna do that. And lock it down. The next time it hits, whoops, we're gonna do that. Then the next time anything hits, we're gonna do that, lock up a dollar. Then the next time one of them hits, that, lock up a dollar. Next time one of them hits, that. Two dollars. I'm sorry, we're locking up two dollars this time. Now, let's say the eight hits again. We're gonna lock up a dollar, we press the one unit. If the eight were to happen to hit again, we're gonna lock up the eight dollars and we're gonna press the one unit. Right? We're gonna press, we're just gonna press one unit. So first we go from next to nothing and press and try and get ourselves proper first, and then after that we're gonna press one unit, right? So we start with next to nothing, press, 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 and then press one unit after that. So this player lost, a, again, probably the equivalent of about half of one of my paychecks. Uh, well, actually, with the two jobs, maybe one of one of my part-time paychecks. The dealers, I would say, probably figured the dealers, from everything that he gave the dealers to bet with, figured probably total to $200, maybe? $150 to $200, somewhere there. So let's say the dealers had a $200 bankroll. You know, just, just imagine the dealers had a $200 bankroll, you know, starting with some very, very low numbers. The dealers actually would have won money. Because not even counting what we lost when the seven out finally occurred, um, however we would press these numbers, but just what we locked up and then dropped into the tote box was probably in the range of 300 bucks. 300 bucks, maybe 400, but I think 300, 300 bucks. So if the dealers had a $200 bankroll, they would have won at least 100 bucks. They would have made at least 50% profit. While this player was a negative 
one hundred percent profit. They had zero. You know, they lost everything. Now they did not make profit. They lost every single penny playing their strategy. It's a good thing the dealers did not have to play to their strategy. So, thank you everybody for watching. I hope you guys find this interesting, illuminating, enlightening, or at least just plain fun. We'll catch you guys next time. Bye now.